Able Then On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Den on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Den on Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler, and Arlene is here today. Hi, Arlene. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on today's um, program, before we get to our wonderful guest, um, Elizabeth Parker from the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition of uh, Montpelier, Vermont. We would like to say special thanks to our sponsors. Um, thank you to Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation, and many others, including um, including support from uh, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and also the Vermont Division. Uh, I mean, the um, Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many, many, many others. Uh, we would like to welcome Elizabeth Parker from the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, and today we're going to talk about uh, transportation, especially um, during and after COVID, and also the um, Green Mountain uh, Transit System and their quote-unquote new uh, my ride program. Welcome to Able Then On Air, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, uh, Lawrence and Arlene, for having me here today. I'm so excited to be here with you. And one of the first things I wanted to ask you was um, we have a my ride community advisory group and we have a list of about 90 community partners. And we would really love to add Able Then On Air to our partner list, if you would be yes, interested we would in definitely joining. definitely love to be part yeah, of your yeah, committee yeah. and um, definitely um, help. Um, and we thank you so much for coming to Able and On Air today and being our partner in this fight of um, accessible transportation. Um, before we begin, you know, one of the things, um, so many people and so many states have problems with their transportation. Mm -hmm. So then maybe you can shed light on that. Um, what are the missions and goals, first of all, what are the missions and goals of the Montpelier, um, the Sustainable, Sustainable Montpelier. Montpelier Coalition? Yeah, so um, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, first of all, we've got a team of um, uh, people, Tom Hubrickson, we have an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer, um, and uh, he has been working with the CAN initiative. Um, we have Laura Brooke, who's the CAN coordinator and has been our research director. Dan Jones is our founding director, and he's now currently working on a project of organizing a citywide sustainability roundtable. And then, of course, there's me, uh, Elizabeth Parker. I'm the community engagement director and the CFO. And um, so the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition came out of the Sustainable Montpelier 2030 design competition. Uh, do you remember that? That was at, um, uh, we had a whole bunch of, um, uh, over 20 uh, teams had done a program 
uh, I mean, had done um, plans of what Montpelier might look like if there wasn't parking. Do you remember that was at, um, where Rabble Rouser is now? It was like maybe five years ago. Oh, yeah, with electric cars, right? Electric. It, no, it wasn't electric cars. It was, it was diagrams of what Montpelier might look like if we didn't have parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, had, we started out, we had 20 entries. We, we put up this design competition, and we thought, oh, you know, not many people will come. And suddenly people from... Japan and from Italy and all over the United States and, and from And Stanford. Montpelier was supposed to also have, I don't know if you were part of this, it was supposed to have a, a new parking garage with, the, with a no, hotel. No, we weren't, we weren't involved with that, but the idea was how to, 65% of downtown is parking. And so uh, we were trying to figure out what, we, what Montpelier might look like if instead of parking we had much needed housing much needed new commercial space and green space along the river. So that's what the design competition was about. And so that's where we have our roots. We started there. And um, that was done by Net Zero Vermont and then Sustainable Montpelier uh, Coalition started. And so our main goal is in the areas of clean transportation, it's land use. And so clean transportation, housing, and open space. Mm -hmm. And now we're kind of, we've branched into community building with capital area neighborhoods. Okay. Um, can you explain to me about the GMGA My Ride? Um, sure. And why that came to be? Sure. So the, as I was talking about uh, the fact that one of our core issues is land use, if 65% of downtown is parking for single occupancy vehicles, then we can't put in new housing and we need desperately need new housing. I mean, we mm -hmm. really really need new housing. And so um, in other parts of the country, on-demand microtransits, which is like a shared Uber or a shared Lyft where you get to choose when you get picked up or dropped off or where you get picked up and dropped off. Um, came into, uh, we became aware of it, and our research director, Laura Brook, did a whole bunch of research on it. And um, then VTrans got involved and created a working group of people who um, were from the city, the state, nonprofit. Um, Peter Yonke from VCIL was on that working group. Um, so we tried to have a broad base of representation mm -hmm. uh, so that people who had disabilities would be represented on that group. Why is it, why is it so hard for, if I'm saying it right, why is it so hard for people with special needs to have accessible transportation, especially in this world today, what we're going through? I, I honestly, it uh, blows my mind that uh, accessibility would be an issue in 2021. Uh, unfortunately, it is. And I'm happy to say that COVID taught us a lot of lessons as a, cu as a culture. And How I, so? Um, well, I just saw Bernie Sanders at an event three weeks ago. And he was talking about the fact that the uh, federal government is going to put a lot more money into public transportation. And um, I think that it is often the case that uh, uh, people who have, uh, for instance, the disability of sight are never going to be driving themselves around. So they need to have some sort of pu good public transportation option an opportunity. So I'm hopeful that the federal government will give more money to the states and that the states will um, pass that along to the local transportation, uh, public transportation groups. Um, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> okay, so um, you want to ask a question within that? Yes. Um, how come <laughs> transportation is better? Is Okay, you know, you have to call, but what if somebody doesn't have a <coughs> cell phone or a computer? What do they do? Yeah, and I, and I think that that, so, you know, my ride is important because there are some people who used to live in parts of Montpelier that weren't served by the bus system. What's great yeah. is that the service area in, has increased. What is the challenge of my ride? If you don't have a phone, then you are, it, it's really hard. And so um, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, along with GMT and all the community partners, 
worked on these questions. And we, um, in particular, talked to Disabilities Rights Vermont and had a fantastic conversation with them because we had previously thought, oh, we'll put tablets at different locations. And, and Disabilities Rights Vermont was like, no, that's not accessible for everyone. You and need not only that, you're, you're opening yourself, I'm sorry to say this because it does happen, example, New York had used to have a lot of phones, mm -hmm. okay, or pay phones. Right. And they took them out, they took them out, they took them out because people were vandalizing them. Right. So if you put a tablet somewhere, it's definitely it's going to get risk. vandalized. So if you put a phone, example, um, years ago, way back, way back in the day, when the when the police department first started in New York, they used to have these emergency call boxes. Exactly. Right, emergency box. You're going to stand a chance of it being vandalized. Yes, you may stand a chance, but it's a lot less likely that a transit phone, which is what you're talking about. So with the, the I'm sorry for what, what, that up. No, no, it's fine. It's, it's a good point. Um, I guess that our point now, uh, Lawrence, is that uh, back in the day when people were vandalizing, the, um, that sort of transit phone or police call box was all there was. Uh, the probability of people vandalizing a phone like that is a lot less because people are looking for things that they can sell for cash, you know. And so um, yeah. it, those, those transit phones are very, very well made. And, um, and I think that the other thing is that they, unlike New York where they were on the subway down in the, you know, dark and, and there might not be anybody yeah, on the track. Yeah, the, the, the cell phone couldn't work, but now they're putting, they're putting, um, you know, like cell towers down underneath so you can make a phone call better, you know, make it more better. They're putting more, they're putting more cell towers no, no, in. Right, in, yeah, so, so, so but this. Said, um, what do you call them? Um, Accessoride is very bad because yes. they don't come on time. So, Lawrence and Arlene, I wanted to say that what um, what uh, Disabilities Rights Vermont's uh, recommendation was that we do put in transit phones, which are the, um, they look like old-fashioned pay phones, but you don't put any money in them. You just pick up the receiver and you go directly to the call center. And if those were located at Walmart, at Berlin Shaw's, Montpelier Shaw's, Price Chopper, uh, at Montpelier Housing Authority locations, at the Transit Center, uh, then uh, people could go, you know, use those phones and uh, and be able to yeah. book their rides. Mm -hmm. the, the question of va uh, vandalism uh, is a very valid point. Uh, I, I think, however, because of the public locations of all those um, places, the probability is uh, a little bit smaller than it would be on an uh, empty uh, subway track in New York City. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, you says um, now the key, uh, um, the shortages of stuff, uh, clean transportation, housing, and open space. Yeah, okay. so Sustainable Montpelier's interest in that. Um, the, in Vermont, uh, we drive, uh, for people who do drive, the, uh, the most rural miles. And so it turns out that our biggest environmental um, issue, a greenhouse gas issue, is transportation. And so, um, you know, the idea of is, oh, well, we'll have an electric vehicle and then it will be clean. But the problem that people don't realize is that, that the, uh, the issue of energy and transportation and accessibility is so intertwined. If we had more people living downtown, then that would be much more energy efficient and in the end it would be more accessible for people. People who have accessibility issues cannot always find housing in downtown where they have access to all of the resources that they need. And so um, we're really interested in finding a way to get more housing downtown. So we realized that 
right now, the... Well, the, the transit center was built in there's apartments there. Exactly. So, in other words, you want to build more housing. More housing, like over the transit center, where you could have commercial downstairs, where you could be above the floodplain, then have commercial, and then have housing above it. And, um, and so we have all these state parking lots. And so what was funny was we started this initiative, and then COVID happened, and then everybody from the state worked from home. So all the parking lots that we were talking about transforming into housing were empty. And we realized, oh my gosh, look at how many acres of land are there that could be turned into housing and green space and mm. commercial use. So um, it okay. was interesting. Now, let's talk about GMTA and really how it works because, you know, um, for example, times are off, there's pros and cons to the system. How, how can or the... Sustainable Montpelier Coalition change that because some, you know, uh, obviously um, Montpelier and Vermont has a lot of, you know, has a huge elderly population yes. and people are not, some people are not happy, some people are happy. So right. how, how can you change that? So, to, um, yeah. I, one of the things I wanted to go through, if um, you have time, is just about... Oh, we've got plenty of time. If oh, we need to go over, we good. can. Good. Okay, so, because um, I just wanted to go over how to make, uh, how to schedule a ride by phone. And um, the first thing, and then we're going to talk about what if your ride doesn't work after we talk about how you schedule a ride. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, um, in the beginning, uh, we GMT had the, their Burlington number, but we now have them using their local number so that it doesn't cost any money for people who still pay for long distance to make a call. So the phone number for GMT is 802-223-7287. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's confusing is that when you call, you get this message and yeah, you have push to push number choose, one for a ride. Yeah, you have to choose number two for my ride. Mm -hmm. So you always want to push number two for my ride. Yeah. And, um, and so option one has different hours than option two. Option, option two. one is for the volunteer drivers for a medical ride. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, but but that that has a shorter. That's from like seven forty-five to four thirty p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Option two is from seven o'clock to six o'clock Monday through Friday. Eight o'clock to six o'clock on Saturday. So they're extended hours. So it's really important for people to always choose number two, option two, and um, and so then. For new riders, you mm -hmm. always have to sign up and give your name and phone number. It's advised if you have email to give email. If you don't, then that's not a problem. And also, if you have accessibility issues, always feel free when you're signing up to tell the customer service representative, um, you know, uh, uh, by the way, I'm, I use a wheelchair, and so I would need to use the lift. Or, um, by the way, um, you know, I'm sight impaired, so I would need to be supplied information in a, a larger font. You know, whatever the particular disability is, always feel comfortable giving that information because we really want to know that. Um, Hi, and, Go yeah, ahead. Arlene? Go ahead, yeah, Arlene. If, somebody, if somebody's blind, right? Yep. Do they have, do they have it in Braille? Yes, I believe that there is, uh, there is that option, yes. And that can be sent to you. So, you know, I think that that um, GMT is really, I mean, I've worked with them and they are really interested in um, making this, the service accessible. And they have done all sorts, I've asked them to do things and they have accommodated people um, many times. And I'm very um, happy to be working with them because they're so responsive. and. Um, and concerned about making the system accessible. Um, you know, I know that we have a number of people who are um, completely blind who use the system, who were using the system before the service was switched over, and who have made a pretty seamless transition to the new system. So, um, you know. What, what was the old system and why didn't it work? Okay, so the, the 
earlier system was what we call fixed route, fixed scheduled buses. So there used to be three fixed route, fixed scheduled buses. One, the circulator, the Montpelier circulator, um, which covered a good bit of Montpelier, but not as big a service area as is now being covered. Then there was the capital shuttle, which basically went out to the Department of Labor, up to National Life, and then back to the State House uh, or the. Um, circulator, yes. The yeah, circulator. The, and then the third bus was uh, Montpelier Hospital Hill, which ran uh, from. Uh, it went from Pioneer to Lane Shops and then uh, back through to uh, Shaw's and then up Berlin Street to CVMC to uh, the Berlin Mall and then Berlin Shaw's and it kept making that loop all day. Those buses were very effective. I mean, they took passengers where they needed to go. But during COVID, it was it because of uh, what was the, um, the change? Was it because of there was less people on the buses? This, this whole system came not because of COVID. This whole, the new, um, the My Ride by GMT uh, initiative was conceived of and planned before COVID happened. And so the advantage of the new system is that, for instance, um, one time I was riding Hospital Hill. I used to ride Hospital Hill every morning to go up to um, First in Fitness because, um, you know, I've had a scoliosis, I've had back pain all my life, and so if I don't exercise, I, you know, I suffer for it. So I would swim six days a week, and I would take the bus up first thing in the morning. I would catch it at like 7.10 and go up to First and Fitness and then come back and then go to work. Uh, and so one time I was coming back and I ran into a couple uh, who lived on Berry Street and they lived down beyond the co-op. They had a child and they would go up and they would get their groceries up at, um, at mm -hmm. Walmart. And in the winter time, here they are with a stroller and the guy has this huge backpack and they have a second stroller to carry some of their goods. So they would have to go from Citizens Bank and walk all the way down Berry Street with all that stuff. Now with a new system, they can get picked up at their house with their child in the winter time when it's snowy and they can go shop and they can, have, they can get all their groceries and they can be dropped off right at their house. So there are lots of accessibility issues of, for people like that who weren't right on the fixed route um, schedule, a fixed route um, uh, mm -hmm. locations. Uh, and so I did want to get into, so w when you call GMT uh, and you choose option two, if you're a new rider, in addition to expressing your accessibility concerns, there's also notification that happens and you want to make sure that your notifications are turned on. So when you're registering, always ask that notifications are turned on. So that means that you would be called the night before and told that you have a ride. And when and you would get a text also. Uh, you, you, might get a, you might get a text, you might get a, some people don't get texts. You might get an email, a text, or a phone call the night before depending upon what your preference is. And then when the driver arrives at your location, um, they press a button and a text, phone call, or email is sent to your, um, your you know, address. And so you would get a phone call saying, you know, your driver has arrived. For most people, they can't get from their house to their location where the driver is in two minutes. But it's a courtesy, so it's important to have no... Uh, mm -hmm. the, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is when you schedule a ride, you have two choices. You can choose the time you leave, and then it's up to the system to choose the time you arrive. Or if you have an appointment you have to get to, you would choose your arrival time. So if I had a doctor's appointment at CVMC at 10 o'clock, I would choose to arrive at CVMC at least 15 minutes early. So I would choose an arrival time of 945. And then the system would figure out when they would pick you up in order to get you to CVMC by 945. Mm -hmm. So then there's some people who were like, oh, well, I was late. And, and 
If you are ever late for an appointment and you do not use the app, but you use the phone, please, 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 please call the call center and report it. Because it turns out that the app is, is, has everything figured out. If there is a, an issue of lateness, it means that there has been a human error, and it means that either there's been a traffic jam or there's a driver error as far as timing. And so we need, as a system, you know, all the riders are now... Are they using computers from the house, the dispatchers, or are they in an office somewhere? Well, they, for a while, the call center people were working from home, but now everybody's coming back into the office at GMT. So um, it doesn't matter if they were using their, their computers at home or not. It's still the same integrated system. Is the um, people, the, is, are they, the, the new call center, is it people that work for GMT or they're yes. for, the, for the my ride? Yes. So everybody, um, so let's just back up a moment. So underneath my ride is a, 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 um, a new um, system. It's a computer system called my ride by GMT app. And it's designed by a group called VIA, who are from Boston. And they're recognized. Laura Brooke, our research director, when she did her studies, all of the people who are using VIA are very happy because VIA is very responsive. If we have a problem, then they will listen and they will fix it on their end. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's important is if you have a problem with the system, call and report it. Because only by our knowing that there's a problem can we fix it. And so it's really, really important. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at some different issues that keep coming up over and over again and, and trying to write it up so that we can then give it to VIA so that they can, um, can solve those problems. Because really now, I want everybody to think that you are a co-owner of this system. You are, you're not just a rider anymore. You, if you give a response and give that feedback, then it can get improved. Before we end, um, are there other transportation um, uh, programs that Sustainable Montpelier Coalition is working on, or is it basically just this? It's just this because we're not really in the, um, uh, we don't really do transportation. We're only doing transportation to get land use downtown change. That's really why we're doing it. And, and I have to say that this has been a wonderful process. Since October 15th, when we started on this, um, we have formed relationships, as I said, with 90 different uh, community partners. Uh, and I'm happy to add Ableton on air to that, uh, mm -hmm. that group. And I was um, listening to your introduction, and I wanted to make sure that Vermont Association um, of the blind is on that list too. Yes, I'm I said I said Vermont Association for the Blind. Yeah, and I'm, I, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm going to make sure that they're on that list. But anyway, um, so I was talking before about arrival and departure time, and it's really important that you know which you're getting because if you have to arrive at a certain time, choose to be a little, a little bit early and make sure you choose arrival time so you get where you need to go on time. Okay, so... Elizabeth, can I ask you a question? Sure. Yes. Um, how long does these my rides, uh, how long do they, what time, how long, what is the last my ride? How, how is this, like, the last, how, how long can you get a my ride? Like, yes. how long is the time? Yeah, so... Time? Usually, so my ride on Monday through Friday starts at 7 o'clock in the morning. So usually a pickup time would be like 7.10, the first pickup or so, realistically. And usually the last um, pickup time, like up at the mall, would be 5.45 because the bus has to get you back to Montpelier and then get back to the Berlin, um, you know, uh, transit barn. Uh, by six o'clock when their shift ends. Okay. So that's the range of time during the week. On the weekend, the service starts at eight o'clock in the morning. So you would usually get like your first pickup time. And then the last thing I wanted to say, Arlene, was that, you know, mm -hmm. if you schedule in advance, uh, you know, like a, the day before or even the month before, 
you have a, you're prioritized in the system. We are, you know, there are some people who just want to um, order up a bus on the fly. And so, um, for instance... Does I, that ruin it for people or is it... Um, you mean the fact... Is it problematic that they're doing it ahead? Um, that's their choice. And so if you know that you're going to have a doctor's appointment, you know, in three weeks, book the ride for that now. You don't wait for it. No, if it's my ride, I tried that. Mm -hmm. I have to call the other number for the volunteer drivers because the my ride said it has to be the same day. No. I, I was told that no, yesterday. No, well, then that, that's misinformation. That you can um, you can reserve a my ride uh, <clears throat> trip for up to a month in advance. You, and so if you, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying right, it, I'm just told I'm, the wrong information. Now. And I'm telling you that that you were given wrong information. I'm trying to clarify. If anybody hears that you can't book in advance, you need to um, ask for a supervisor because that's not true. <laughs> And so um, you can also have a recurring ride. So there are people who, for instance, work at Berlin Shaw's and mm -hmm. they book a ride uh, five days <clears> a week <throat> at the same time uh, for up to a month out in advance. And then they have their return trip booked at the, at the same time in the evening up to a month in advance. So you can book all those trips in one sitting. Um, okay. Um, so where can people reach? reach you and then where can people reach my ride okay so um it's really important uh that people uh reach out to gmt uh if they have any questions and um i believe the email is info at um uh ride gmt dot com uh if you have a, a concern and you can email otherwise if you want to reach GMT, the phone number again is 802-223-7287, option two. And, if and you, the website for Montpelier, for Sustainable, sustainable Montpelier Coalition. So our website is uh, sustainablemontpelier.org, mm -hmm. and our phone number is 802-272-1195. And we're also on uh, social media on Facebook and Instagram for people who do that. Um, and if you have email and you want to shoot us an email, we're info at sustainablemindpillier.org. Well, um, I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of um, Able Done On Air. Again, if you would like more information on Sustainable Montpelier um, uh, Coalition, you can go to www.sustainablemontpillier.org or their number is 802-272. 1195 and um, um, GMTA uh, uh, to book a my ride is 802 um, it, what so, is it? Yeah, okay. so they're 802, um, oh my gosh, here, it's right here on this sheet. It's okay. 802-223-7287. Uh, yeah. I, I know it in my sleep. Uh, uh, <laughs> 802 two, 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 three. Three. Seven, two, eight, seven. seven. Option two. Option two. And uh, for those that want to find out more about Ableton On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That's O-R-C-A media.net. And uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, uh, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and we would like to especially thank um, um, Elizabeth Parker and um, our new partner. Yes, um, I'm so excited. Our new partner of the Able Done On Air Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. Um, please, it's extremely important to have um, transportation for people with disabilities, and we hope that my ride does continue. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Able Den On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities. 
to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy 